Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I feel like I should have been here earlier, so I apologize. Um, I have enjoyed the um, discussion thus far and reading the testimony. Um, you know, my favorite movie is Contact, right? So every year it comes out since 1997. I watch it. I dream. I think, well, you know, who knows? Uh, what is intriguing about this conversation is the idea that, um, and it it's a little bit of hubris, right, that somehow we are waiting to find them as opposed to them finding us. Um, and maybe that is just the nature of Homo sapiens. That is kind of what we, uh, what we do. Um, but I am a little bit uh, curious, um, Dr. Wertheimer, in your prepared statement, you discussed the panachromatic SETI project, which will use six telescopes to search nearby stars and uh, and stars most likely to host an exoplanet system similar to the sun's. And so the project, as you describe it, would examine a large portion of the electromagnetic spectrum spanning from low frequencies through optical light to detect possible signals from advanced civilization. How are the target stars that you talked about identified, and how are you going to coordinate the use of the six telescopes? Uh, we are not trying to use the telescopes all at the same time. Um, that that's actually hard to do. So we just use a telescope, and, and other groups are we're working with a lot of groups at universities and observatories. But typically, we'll we'll use one telescope, and then a month later, we'll use another telescope, and so on. The the stars that we're targeting, we, we instead of targeting stars that we know have planets because mm -hmm. of Kepler spacecraft, it looks like all stars have planets. So we're just going to target the nearest stars, uh, and so that's our plan: is uh, just target the nearby stars. Right. And you talked also about the, um, uh, you know, this notion that there are just sort of 24 of you folks, you know, most interested robustly, academically, you know, studying this. But aren't there like a whole bunch, there's a whole network of people out in communities who kind of feed or fuel uh, some of the research that you're doing? Seth, do you want to take that one? <laughs> <laughs> Dan, Dan refers to me because I don't think we know the answer to that question. Uh, in order to do this, it would be like saying, you know, uh, sure, there are a few thousand people looking for the Higgs boson, but what about the communities that are feeding that? If you don't have the instrument, it's very hard to do the experiment, and the the number of instruments involved here is very small. It's so the rest of us are really just you know dreaming and pretending that that's what we're. Well, uh, that's all right. You don't have to answer that. I was not serious at all. Um, and and then I want to talk about uh, security issues in the time that we have left. Um, I understand that early on there was an assessment of the robustness of the SETI home software to withstand malicious attacks and penetrations. And in the earlier study, you found that there had been two noteworthy attacks and the web server was compromised. And you also found later that exploiting a design flaw in your uh, client server protocol that hackers had actually stolen thousands of u user email addresses. Can you give us an idea of the current state of security? Um. Yeah, I think in general, downloading software and installing it on your computer, you should be careful. It actually turns out that SETI at Home is, is one of the, the safest things you can install on the computer. And the reason is because millions of people are using it and, and testing it out. Uh, and so, uh, um, so, so it, and also, it's been running for a really long time. And it's open source software. The software is anybody can read the software and help us. Uh, a lot of the volunteers actually help us write the software. And we're, we're now reporting it to cell phones. So you can run it on a cell phone, which will allow us a lot of people, even more people, to participate in the search. I guess some of the question is just the challenge, when, especially whenever you deal with open source, uh, the challenge of the system's vulnerability. Yeah, I actually think open source software is actually a little safer uh, because so many eyeballs can, can look at it. Uh. Okay, I'm done. I think I'll just go back to watching my movies. <laughs> <laughs>